Okay, this week we're a little off subject, but I want to really cover a topic I've been thinking about related to ChatGPT AI and knowing scientific evidence and if things are true or not. So my daughter and me, really, we've been kind of researching scientific questions using ChatGPT. And the answers are pretty amazing. But we know that AI isn't always fully accurate. So how do you know if that information you're getting is accurate? Uh, like, what's the next step? Okay, so say we do a research prompt like my daughter did about cerebral palsy and uh, cortical visual impairment. Or say you're doing something about kidney disease and diet or kidney disease and medications. So you do that and ChatGPD gives you this uh, great answer um, with resources. And you say, okay, well, is this actually true? Or is this kind of made up and have they kind of massaged the evidence or have they misinterpreted the evidence that's out there? So, you know, if, if you're a scientific person, what you do when you get something like that is you will go to the sources. Okay, so it'll give you, say, 10 articles to look at that um, tell you where they got the information from, how they synthesized data, uh, and came to that conclusion. But the problem with this is not all these studies that ChatGPT is pulling from is true are true or, or well done. So, you know, in the past, if you do this as a physician like me, you get like the smartest people around you and they can look at those studies and they can say, okay, no, not a good study. Okay, that one is biased. This one is biased. So you can't really come to the conclusions that they're saying. But AI doesn't do that. So AI will look at the conclusion generated by the author um, and conclude that that is uh, a scientific uh, study point, scientific endpoint, a conclusion. And once it does that, then it pops it into the article. But there are a lot of things that can be wrong. So sometimes the studies that are presented and the conclusions that are um, uh, that authors come to, scientists come to, they are incorrect. So not all scientists are created equally. So some scientists may come up with a conclusion that misinterprets the data. Scientists may have developed a study or a research project that um, includes inherent biases that they don't realize. So if you have studies and researchers that are inaccurate from the beginning and you have journals that are publishing studies that don't have the greatest scientific rigor. And really, if you look at the journals and what places are publishing, there's more and more journals um, without the same scientific rigor as uh, journals used to have. The best way I've found for AI to work for me is if I've already interpreted the data, I already know um, what the scientific studies say, and then I can look at kind of a generated AI summary and say, okay, that's true, that's not true. Um, otherwise, I'd be lost. I'm not sure what the answer is, uh, but it's something that we'll have to watch, something that I'll have to watch as I use AI, and all of us will have to watch as we use AI. Otherwise, it will just be this kind of like self-perpetuating um, conclusion of uh, mediocre information that may or may not have the uh, scientific merit that we all hope for when we're looking for health information. And we may not know it for 10 to 15 years when we really get into kind of see how people are doing. And we realize that what uh, the studies in AI are telling us has not helped us the way we'd hoped they would. Okay. That's what I'm chewing on today. I'm Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board certified kidney doctor and the cooking doc. Thanks for watching.